let's get to the tools, man. That's that's just that. I'll save the rest of that for the uh, Q and A and updates, um, or maybe we'll mix it in. Who knows? I got this light off the truck today. I am very fond of the Snap-on lights. This is a 6600, 60 lumens on that light. And then it has the uh, the stick light, which is the uh, 600 lumen light. With, uh, you know, like Snap-on, you hold a button down, it dims it, or it brightens it based on you holding the button down. So if I, click it again and hold the button i can dim it down see it's going down until it gets to the lowest setting where it will blink and then it's at the lowest setting if i want to take it to a higher setting just hold the button down and when it gets to the highest setting it will blink that's it now it's at the highest setting and then when you turn it off whatever setting you have it at once you turn it off, after you leave it on that setting for a couple seconds, you turn it back on, it'll go automatically back to where you had it at. So that's how that works. It is magnetic on the base. It is magnetic. My box is like, this is plastic. So I'll find a spot that's metal. So that's helpful. The reason I got this one is because this is the one that uses the the battery packs so i bought extra battery packs comes with oh, i don't know if it comes with it i bought a charger extra batteries and the light because as you guys know these lights when you use them on bright they only last like two and a half three hours max and then they're dead and uh i want to be able to swap the batteries out and that's a battery door on the bottom near the magnets uh i don't think it has any other magnets on it anywhere else only on the base yeah the magnet is only on the base but super fond of their lights uh case and, like i warranty these out like 10 times man i mean i got a great snap-on dealer he doesn't give me any hassles for whatever reason i have a problem with something he always takes it back no questions asked he doesn't look at it he's not examining it he's like throw it in the box get another one so when you got a good dealer, it's 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 easy to uh to get their stuff. I got this uh, little Craftsman fan. I bought this for church. Sometimes it's smoking in there, and uh, very low noise. You can barely hear it. Like it's on right now. I don't know if you can hear it or not. And of course, I'm using a four amp hour battery, so it lasts forever. Okay, and then I got a couple bits. So I have this blue point set. So uh, one, two, three, Don Master. I found out about this kit watching this channel a long time ago when he did a, a YouTube video about this kit. Okay, and uh, after I saw that, I was like, oh man, I gotta have it. That's a good kit. You know, the, the bits pop up and come out kind of like the Milwaukee, but Milwaukee cases, the whole row comes up. I like that these are single and I can just take these out and it's, and it's pretty complete, right? Phillips, flats, uh, hex driver. And then it's enough space in the box to where I keep extra stuff in here, like quarter inch anvil, uh, DeWalt, uh, Phillips tip bit with the magnetic thing on it so I can slide it on the other ones if I keep losing the screw, which happens. And then these Malco uh, flip nut drivers, magnetic, so that like you see all that shaving, that's, that's what I hate about magnetic uh, nut drivers and I stopped using them. And when I found out about these, you can pull the whole sleeve off clean off the magnet and you're good to go. So that's awesome. And then it has, of course, your Torx. So this is a very good kit, very compact, really good. And so what happens is the blue point bits aren't the best quality. I mean, they're not terrible, but they're not the best. So as I wear them out, I replace them with snap-on bits 
which do have a lifetime warranty. These blue point bits that come in this set, these are not lifetime warranty. Um, so every time I mess one up like this one, which I have got really, really hurt with this. This thing shot through my finger one day because it cammed out and uh, went through my thumb, the side of my thumb. So uh, picked up this one, put the snap on bit in there, fits in there, and that's what I'm doing. So I've already replaced the uh, square with a snap on and uh, that's what I'm doing. So this this bit is no good. It's uh, it was good, but it's wore. I use these a lot, so it's wore out. And then I was working on that furnace that I did another video on, which turned out to be trash because the uh, heat exchanger is rusted out, and it needs so many parts. The motor, blower motor is rusted out. It, had a water leak above it. Eh, not worth fixing. So, and I lost this. Like, I lost this thing. It's an eighth inch drive Allen wrench. It came out of the snap-on set, and that drives me crazy. I couldn't, I couldn't find a thing. I looked all over, I cleaned up. That's why the top of the toolbox is so clean. And then uh, I found it. It was in here. <laughs> I got in there. I know how because I was using this set and I put it all together like that. And when I went to uh, on another furnace call that I'm just coming back from, there it is. So I left it. I need to grab it out of the tool bag where it's at. I put it in a tool bag because I use the eighth inch Allen wrench as a feeler gauge for setting the gaps on the electrode, the flame sensors. It's, you know, so whenever I have a spec that calls for an eighth of an inch, which is a pretty popular spec, like even on your aqua hots for the uh, the electrode um, has an eighth of an inch spec on that too. Um, so I use this as a feeler gauge, and this is a new one, which I the other one I kind of bent it and twisted a little bit because. Uh, that was so rusted, trying to get the set screw out, it wasn't coming out anyway, because it was so rusted. So anyway, I bought another one today while I was on the truck. So now this set is back complete. Love these Allen wrenches. Speaking of Allens, guys, I'm not a fan of this. The, the ball, I'm not a fan of those. It, it's a weak point. And like when I'm working on something that's rusted and like, when I was trying to get this a loose, I finally freed up this motor, but I still won't put the furnace back together and put it in service because it's dangerous with the uh, the with a with a breach in the uh, heat exchanger and the exhaust pipe is also rusted out and cracked. That's an eighth of an inch Allen, and uh, man, I had that Allen wrench twisted like that, so I had it bent so far back. This thing wasn't. It's not coming out, man. Our PB blaster did everything. So if I was using like a ball one, I would be very concerned that it would break because it's, it's such a weak, a weak point. And I don't need that stuck into something that's hard to get to giving me more work. I don't, I don't want that thing broken off. So uh, I'm not a fan of these. I have them. I don't use them, but I'm not a fan of these. And I have more on the truck, and they're like the uh, the nut grip ones. Um, but anyway, got those. Flashlight. This has turned out to be a really good kit, guys. Uh, I use this a lot. It has a couple picks in it because I'm a precision screwdrivers and precision torques and like a full pick set. This is really nice, guys. Don't sleep on the set. This is a nice set, um, very useful. Typically, every time I gotta work on a furnace or a thermostat or anything like this, I'm grabbing this kit because it has what I need in it. All in one place, nice compact package. Now, I was on the truck looking for this, right? 
And I, so I thought what it said was uh, extra deep. See, extra deep socket set. It's like buy the extra deep socket set for $400 and get the extra shallow. Well, when I got on the truck, it's the flank drive extra. They're just FDX sockets. And I just totally read around. He was like, yeah, people. He did have the quarter inch extra deeps, but those are like, they are $400 <laughs> just for that set in extra deep. And you don't get anything with it. I was like, nah, because I already have, no, I don't have, well, that's just regular shallows. So those are just regular deep sockets and regular shallow sockets, which I have plenty of those. I don't need any more quarter inch. And then I have like, see, I thought I was getting something like that. The super stubby ones, but in Snap-on. So if I was going to get them for free, I was like, oh, wow. Well, not for free at a discount. I would have got that, but so I read the flyer wrong. Waiting on those torque wrenches. I ordered those. He hadn't got them in yet. The foam set from a quarter inch, three eighths, half inch drive, tech angles in green and black. Very sweet looking guys. Let me get those. Uh, the flyer. Wasn't a whole lot in this flyer, so I didn't bother going through it. I looked through it, see stuff that I wanted, but I didn't see anything. Guys, this. You got to get one of these things. RV guys, working on these furnaces, and you're trying to disconnect the line that goes to the gas valve, and it's right on the side, and it's hard to get to. You need this, guys. Specifically, this one, the XL. This thing will save you, man. It's just, it, it works like a ratchet and wrench, but it's, op it's open-ended, has a spring in here. It's auto-adjusting. It's not hard to get it started. Just to put it on something, you just, it just easily goes on, you know, and fits to size. It, this is awesome, man. This is a good tool. I, I mentioned it before. Get this. They, they sell a whole set. And I, and I thought about buying it, um, working with the propane system, you know, doing pigtails and stuff like that, just for speed and convenience. It's like a, like $120 for like a four piece set. And see, I already have the uh, XL and the double XL and that kit goes from small to large with or extra small, small, medium and large. So I would have like the full, full, full kit if I were to get that. But uh, thinking about it, this is the one I use the most. The bigger one, the double XL, I don't use as much. This one right here, 19 to 24, that's a sweet spot. Messing with gas stuff. And I also thought about just buying another one of these, but I use one as a backup, but nah. I use a regular adjustable wrench for a backup. But these... Don't sleep on the weir, guys. What else we have? Uh, I think that's it, guys. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. As far as uh, updates and stuff, I'll do a different video because this one is already past 15 minutes. Okay. My bad, guys. I forgot to do uh, part numbers and prices. So here we go. So for this light, Part number is right here. And that one is, um, and there's a price for that light. This charging base, there's the part number for that, for that guy. And the charging base is right here. All right. And the batteries are $40. So $40 for the batteries. So those are the prices and part numbers. Um, this one, which is a light that I use every day it is, this is the part number for it, right here. I don't know what the, 
Uh, I can probably find it because I got my, at the end of the year, I get all my statements for a county. So ECP, let me look for ECP on here and see about finding it. ECP, yep. This this light was $73. So that was a good deal. I got that one for $73. All right, so there's the prices and the part numbers for that tool haul. Catch you guys later. RV Tech Pro out.